Welcome to Workshop Topics. This one is all about changing the oil in my Smart & Brown 1024 lathe. I've owned this machine for many years and it's always been absolutely top class. It's a tool room lathe, it's extremely heavy and it's very accurate. I need to change the oil but I'm going to do it as per usual in quite an unorthodox manner. I can go around the back of the machine and grovel about in the back undoing various pipes and bits and pieces or I can do it this way. In the last episode of the series How to Build a Stuart Model Steam Plant the lathe was running in the background and I explained what the noise was by showing some of these clips. The oil supply for the headstock and the gearbox comes from the main clutch unit gearbox inside the lathe and to get to the internals of this lathe because it's so heavy is quite difficult. It's by a large door in the workshop which does open but it takes a while to get everything off the door to open it and that is why I'm using this method. With the motor running the oil is pumped from inside the clutch gearbox first to the main gearbox on the lathe and simultaneously to the headstock bearings. After about an hour's running spread over two days the oil window was empty. This oil is quite new but it's not the right stuff it's a bit thick. Here's a flashback showing what the lubricating oil looked like. Because this oil is really good quality I thought it would be okay but it's too thick and the viscosity caused me some problems. The first problem being it took a while for the spindle to reach maximum speed and even when the lathe wasn't running the spindle would rotate just with the drag of the oil in the primary gearbox. This lathe is a real piece of engineering. This image shows the headstock with the cover removed. I ran the lathe one more time just to make sure all of the oil was out of it and indeed it was, nothing came out of the pipe going to the gearbox. I did a bit of googling to find out what type of oil a Smart & Brown 1024 lathe uses. The results told me that I needed to use an oil called DTE but it was very expensive and thanks to a user on YouTube called Shedmade I found out that there is an equivalent called Telus 37 and when I went online to a reputable oil supplier this is what came up. I poured the entire bottle into the headstock, not all at one side. I poured some at this side and some at the other side as you've just seen. It takes quite a while for the oil to find its way into the gearbox in the heart of the lathe. After a while the new oil found its way to the primary gearbox and the bubbles stopped and everything looked okay. With the top cover removed I can only run the lathe very slowly otherwise I get covered in oil, it splashes everywhere. As you can clearly see there is plenty of oil being supplied to all of the moving parts in the headstock. The level in the window dropped but I think this is okay because if you leave it for a while the oil level in the window eventually becomes constant and this is the way I've always run this lathe. Once I was happy that I got enough oil in the system I replaced the lid on the headstock. Time to give it a proper test run and see what it sounds like. This lathe originally had a really big three-phase, three-speed motor but I couldn't cope with that in my small domestic workshop. Years ago in the early 90s when I bought this lathe I removed the original motor and fitted a single-phase, single-speed, one-horsepower motor. The clutch system gives me two primary speeds, slow and fast as I've just shown and with back gear engaged and using the same clutch system I get two more speeds and I've always found this to be more than enough. I'm going to remove the brass plate from the front of the main gearbox to see what's going on inside here. In this gearbox there are three of these oilers, the one that you can see in the middle and one at each side. A while back when I looked in this gearbox I was horrified to find that the oilers had never worked since I first bought this lathe. When I bought it it was in a bit of a shabby condition so I had a look inside the gearbox and everything looked brand new mainly because it had come out of a school for children with learning difficulties and the powers that be had thrown away the change wheels so when I bought this lathe the gearbox had never turned and all of the internal gears were perfect like the day they were made. Luckily I had the foresight and don't ask me why I did this to put a lot of grease in the gearbox when I put it all back together. I had to dismantle part of the gearbox only to replace a bearing on the lead screw. That was all that was wrong with it. Before replacing the brass plate, I moved the oiler over the gear 
in the position it's normally in when I use this gearbox. I don't really need to do any screw cutting for what I do, I just use it for the auto traverse. Once I'd replaced the brass plate, I thought it would be a good idea to test everything. This lathe has auto traverse, both longitudinally and on the cross slide. And by manipulating the controls on the gearbox, I can change the speed of the traverse. What I'm going to do here is to just show the difference. I'm machining a piece of cast iron, and I've set the traverse on the lathe saddle to allow for a power cross feed, and I'm facing across the front. And I'm machining this with a fairly fast traverse. This is running in real time, although I have edited it just so you don't go into a coma. In the home workshop, not in industry, it is better to machine cast iron slowly. OK, if you're in an industrial application, you can have coolant and special apparatus and do it fast. But it's better to do it slowly, you get a better finish. Once I'd faced across the front of this piece of cast iron with a fairly fast traverse, I turned it around in the chuck to do the other side. And this time I've selected a very slow traverse speed, so it's going to take a long, long time. Sitting watching this clip does teach me some patience, really. I mean, eventually it will get there, but if I speed it up, that will ruin the demonstration. I'm purposely taking a very fine cut, so theoretically the finish on this end should be better than the one that I've shown previously. I have, of course, edited these clips because there's nothing worse than sitting for a massive length of time watching a lathe tool doing nothing more than going across the front of a piece of metal. I could have gone and made a cup of tea, or maybe two cups of tea in the time it's taken to do this side. Leaving a lathe like this unattended is definitely not what I want to do. There is no auto off at the end of the job. Here are the two comparisons. This is cut number one with a faster traverse speed and it looks like the moon. The very thought of it, a cast iron moon. When I turn the piece over, you can immediately see the difference. It's a much finer finish. And that is it for this episode, job done. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.